Damian Pierce has had an interesting start to his rookie career. Uh, Texans cut Marlon Mack before the season ever started. People thought that Marlon Mack, at least early in camp, would be the you know number one running back. Damian Pierce would spell him. If if it wasn't Marlon Mack, then Marlon Mack would be the backup. But they He's cut Marlon this Mack. Week. What's that? He's going to play this week. Who, Sam Fran picked him up? Uh, they put him on the practice squad. They uh, they elevated him to the active roster. Yeah, I, I thought it was Sam Fran that picked him up. Yep. But so he's been bouncing around the league. It's uh, a running back room that, look, they don't have tons of talent. I like Damian Pierce. I think Damian Pierce is going to be a good running back. I think he showed some things in week two that proves he's going to be a good running back. But they have nothing behind Damian Pierce. And in today's NFL, look, if you want to run 40 times a game, you probably got to split it up between two different guys. Uh, you're not you're not asking one dude to carry the rock that much. I was critical of the Texans uh, coming off the uh, game against Sunday. If they really wanted to win that game, why are you throwing it 38 times and only running it 15 times with Especially Damian Pierce? Especially when you get four and a half per carry. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you were running the ball into the back of the offensive line and you weren't gaining any yards like it was in week one. Uh, whenever you were taking on the Colts. Your yeah. best option was was running the football with Damian Pierce on Sunday. Well, I think this is where you can, getting back to last segment's conversation, it is fair game to ask Pep Hamilton the question. Look, even if you know what you know that we don't, that's why you're not running the kind of plays that we would like we would like to see of a more open-style offense. Well, I don't you, even need to be open. I just I'm need just to saying, be optimal. Uh, less vanilla more wrinkles to it that could be executed. Or run it 38 times and well, throw it 19. Well, that's what I'm getting to. So that it, it, even if it's pre-snap movement or things like that, so that the defense has to at least pay a, a different a, attention to that, the more the bigger knock on Pep Hamilton is exactly what you said. Why aren't you running the full? If you know that you have issues, or at least your head coach doesn't have a whole lot of trust in your offense, but when you see you're getting four and a half yards a carry from, from Pierce, and you know that he's got 70-plus yards, and you know that he's a guy that at least puts you in a position where you're dealing with second and six, second and five, as opposed to second and 11 and 12 where he gets sacked or, you know, second and 10 because he throws another uh, a duck to the sidelines. Why didn't you run the football? Why did you go away from it? And then take it a step back a week earlier and go, why did you go with Rex Burkhead so much in week in the first week with all the touches too if you knew what you had in Pierce? I get it. He has to learn how to block. He has to pick things up. But from a running perspective, he knows how to run the football. The fact that Burkhead was on the field 70% of the time and Pierce was on the field 30% of the time in week one was strange. Lovey mm -hmm. Smith addressed it and said that that was not the right thing to do with their top running back. So then they they switched the balances in, in week two against Denver where Damian Pierce was the only running back that had a carry. Rex Burkhead did not have a single carry in that game. He still played a decent percentage of the snaps, third down stuff, pass protection, was targeted out of the backfield, but literally did not run the football once uh, in the Denver game. And look, that's fine. I understand Damian Pierce is your best running back. If you're going to hand it off, it makes sense to hand it off to Damian Pierce. But I think we can agree that the the most successful thing, when you just break it down, run or pass, for the Houston Texans, it makes more sense to run the football. The problem, though, is you have nothing behind Damian Pierce that you can mm -hmm. trust. Uh, Rex Burkhead, like he's a good veteran, good guy to have in the room, whatever. You're not he expecting him to run. down back. Sure, yeah, he can be a third down back. But, like, you don't want to break down a rookie in Damian Pierce. He's part of your long-term plans. You know, you draft him in the fourth round. You feel strongly about him. You think that he can be a really good player someday. So the Texans kind of have a dilemma there. They have nothing behind Damian Pierce. He's a rookie, but he gives them their best chance to move the football on Sunday. So how many carries is too many for a rookie in Damian Pierce if you're also thinking about the longevity of his career? Hey guys, back to the video in just one minute. Before that, I want to tell you about Fitz Roofing. If you got a leaky roof or need a full roof replacement on your business or your home, and or you want to get something done around the yard or maybe something around the house, they have the best warranties in the business, the best ratings and the best service. They're going to take care of you every step of the way. Fitz Roofing, making a difference one home at a time. Look, I think depth would be beautiful. It'd be a great thing to have, but we know this team lacks depth across the roster because it's a total rebuild. And, and as lucky and as savvy as they have been to find all of the hits that they've gotten out of the draft with these young players that have the ability to play, we knew that they couldn't address every position group, and they certainly couldn't be worried about the twos when they were, there were too many ones to try and put in a position to actually be decent football players. But I think that as you look at the whole scenario, 
it's one thing to say, well, I didn't play Pierce as much in week one and that you can, you, you might not like it, but you have to understand it. You played Burkhead more because he knows how to pick up a, a, the, the blitzes and the blocking schemes that have to be done. But the thing that really makes it even more confusing in week two is as much as you turn the tides, as you said, and gave more touches to Pierce, the problem is, is you were successful. He was running the football, but you were still throwing the football quite a bit because the numbers show that. But yet suddenly you can't, now you can't go to the excuse in the fourth quarter and say, well, he wasn't picking up block blocking packages. That's why we took him out of the game. Because he was doing it for three quarters while he was also running the football, and you didn't lose the lead till the fourth quarter. I, it, it makes it even more befuddling to me why you just didn't finish out the game with at least more balance, mm. so the defense couldn't just pin back their ears and go get Davis Mills. I do think part of it is the fact they don't want to run Damian Pierce into the ground. Uh, that's what. That's why the lack of depth isn't great. It's also like you have Rex Burkhead as your backup. You you have to use him at some extent. Period. Like any time that Rex Burkhead was in that Denver game. They're passing. It was off. They're yeah. passing. They're, yeah. they're literally not handling handing him the football at all. So, like, the fact that you have to give Damian Pierce some rest, the fact that Damian Pierce can't be running at 40 times a game, uh, the fact that you can't have Rex Burkhead in the game in the backfield and never handle the football because the defense is going to know what you're doing in terms of passing or running the football, Rex Burkhead's going to have to get carries because of the lack of depth. But what is too many carries for Damian Pierce? For me, like 22 carries is all that I would be giving Damian That's Pierce. Fine. The fact that, you know, you think that you're a team that isn't going to be contending with the playoffs here in 2022, that Damian Pierce is somebody, that, look, you have him for at least four years, this one and three more. You think that he could be your long-term answer at running back. If you're handing him the ball 30, 35 times, you go four and 13 and he breaks down in year three, you're doing Damian Pierce a disservice. Well, and I hear you. But then the, then the question becomes on Nick Casario's front, are you looking for another running back that they you can add make. to? They should be is right, right? Because the one thing that we figured out is you don't have to have a first-round draft pick or a top draft pick running back to be in your running back room you can find running backs all over the place and maybe just maybe this is why Marlon Mack should have been on this roster just because if nothing else he can suck up some carries he's an experienced NFL running back he can pick up blitzes the way Burkhead did because he's an experienced NFL player and and he's not going to be called on to do all that much so when you do call his number if he can just get three or four yards every here and there and, and do some things to give some rest to Mack then you should have kept him on your roster. You shouldn't have risked putting him on the practice squad, even if it was he was out of shape because of the fact that he wasn't going to play that much. But during the week, you could probably push him a little bit more mm -hmm. to kind of get his cardio and, and his, his conditioning better. And you'd be in a better position than just leaving a running back room with those two guys doing everything that in the running back. What's that number for you? What's the carry? Harvey carries? Yeah, what's the, what's the, the I think number you're right. for you? I, I no would more stick than that. below 20, 22 carries for him. But I don't want Rick, Rex Burkhead to pick up the rest of them. I would like to find a younger, more explosive set of legs. Well, good luck with that. Well, but you you know what? Look at San Francisco in the last couple of years. They've picked up guys consistently, whether it be late in the draft or just guys that were, you know, on the scrap heap somewhere else. A lot of that is scheme, though. But but because you're only you're not looking for them to be the starting running back one. You're just looking for a guy that for like three or four series, two or three series a game that you can come in. And show that the defense has to respect that, hey, look, if there's any kind of a hole, this guy's quick enough and shifty enough to get you some yards. Mm -hmm. That That's why you don't have to go get like an all-pro caliber or a top-notch running back. Just get a young set of legs that's that's reliable enough to hang on to the football that can make one move to buy some time for the guy that's going to be here long term. That's why Marlon Mack was just a huge swing and miss. He, he was supposed yeah. to be that guy. He was supposed to be the one getting 10, 12, 15 carries. In fact, I think he was signed with the idea he'd be running back number one. Mm -hmm. The fact that that was such a huge failure, that, that he couldn't even make the team on a team that has Rex Burkett as your backup running back, shows you probably where Marlon Mack is at this stage of his career and how badly Nick Casario missed. Like We've given Nick Casario flowers for hitting on Jerry Hughes, even though it's been only two weeks. Stevie uh, Nelson. Rasheem, uh, Rasheem Green, who had a good game in week two. Steven Nelson, who's been fine. And look, I'm not trying to take those away from Nick Casario. Those were good fines, and, and especially whenever you have a winning team, those are the type of fines that you have to have to kind of elevate you know, a good team to a, a, a slightly a better than good team. Um, but Marlon Mack was a huge swing and miss because he was supposed to be at least getting you double-digit carries, and he's literally not on your team.